Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of highlight some of the 3.21 patch notes, primarily the ones affecting Righteous Fire. Now there is a lot of changes and I would say for this build specifically, there are two big spots that it gets hit. Number one, primarily mastery changes. There was a big mastery overhaul in Path of Exile. Uh, number two would be the leveling portion, which we're still going to have to figure out. For players who are unaware of what the masteries are, uh, those are basically when you go towards a section on the passive tree and you go ahead and allocate the mastery. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into a quick deep dive. So the first thing I like to do whenever the patch notes drop is uh, control F, righteous fire. If it dings, we're safe. Second thing I like to do is uh, fire trap. Looks like we're safe again. And the third thing we got to do is jugger. Oh, looks like we're safe. That guy can't catch us now. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and jump into right now are essentially the changes. So, uh, new map mods. Mobs deal percentage physical damage as chaos. This is a pretty dangerous map mod when we play Juggernaut. Not necessarily because we're a juggernaut, but because in general, chaos is dangerous, right? You want to make sure your chaos is typically pretty high up there when you play a melee build. Um, there is a new mastery that will help alleviate some of this, but this is just something to notice, right? Or to, to note. Um, another one, uh, Maven Invitation item quantity passives no longer each provide increased quantity of items found in the Maven's Crucible. They now each provide final map boss and each map has an 8% chance to drop a Maven's Invitation. This is more, I highlighted this just because of SSF. I think this will potentially be a little nice, but not 100% sure. Not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> they added a new recovery mastery, which replaces the life mastery um, in the vampirism infused flesh and hardy passive clusters. The reason I highlighted this is if you're unaware, hardy is a passive that we actually take in our build, and it's one of the big ones for RF, so we actually technically get a whole new mastery out of this. All right, let's get let's get right into it. So, um, I have not highlighted like I haven't put all the masteries in here. Some of them I have all of them, but a lot of them I just have the one that I think is important. So, new armor ES mastery: ten percent of armor also applies to chaos damage taken from hits. As a juggernaut, I swear to you, this will make you almost immortal. It's going to be disgusting. It's not something you necessarily are always going to take, especially now with some changes, but you would probably, so if you look, it's an armor ES mastery. Your best place to get that would be here, right? We path right over to here anyway at spiritual aid. So you could put two points into the armor and ES at faith and steel, and you could take that mastery. It's also not bad because it gives you good armor and Ellie res, but again, might be a little overkill for the survivability. Okay, uh, armor masteries. So one big thing to note here, is the determination mastery for reservation has been removed. So everyone who's already been struggling with aura reservation, you new players, um, don't worry, I have this covered already and it's actually easier than before, but let's get into it. So some of the cool things we have on here now, I, I wanna highlight one of the big ones. 1% to all maximum resistance, if equipped helmet, body armor, glove, and boots all have armor. Not sure if you know this or not, but Legacy of Fury is an armor evasion piece, and that does work. So body armor, helmet, glove, and boots, not a problem. So this is effectively one max res for one point. Fantastic node. Armor evasion mastery, every four seconds regenerate life equal to 1% of armor and evasion. Kind of cool. Not really something we're going to use. I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, this is something I haven't seen before. It's a nice meme. Caster Mastery, 25% chance to open up nearby chests when you cast a spell. Not really too sure, but seems kind of cool. Uh, Elemental Mastery. We did lose 15% Ellie, uh, Ellie Res Mastery. Kind of sad. Um, we still do have the Exposure You Inflict applies minus 18, which was one of our main ones. Uh, it does. We do also lose the increased effect of non-damaging ailments, but that is a more niche setup for when you have Legacy of Fury. So that also does suck a little bit, um, but this is still here and this is a big part of progression. So this is okay. There's also this weird one here, hits. So we can just read, your fire trap has a 25% chance to treat enemy monster elemental resistance values as inverted. Only problem with this is it's hits and majority of our fire trap damage is burning ground and partial ignite. I don't really think this will be super good, but it's something to test out. You know, those super tanky mobs you're just chucking fire traps at. So just a question mark, right? 
Okay, fire mastery. Here is one of the saddest things in the patch. We lost the 20% fire multi minus 30 fire res. On the bright side, we gained 30 fire res. <laughs> Not a very good trade off. We'll explain. Um, so fire exposure you inflict applies minus five fire res. This is still here. That's good. Um, there are some cool things on here. Burning enemies you kill have a 3% chance to explode, dealing a tenth. You don't know how much damage that is. That will one shot a rare mob. Like if you kill a white mob and you hit a rare mob with a tenth of its life with our fire scaling, there's a good chance it gets one shot. Um, this is just something kind of interesting. It's like somebody described it well in my chat. Uh, it's Walmart Legacy of Fury. I don't know how good it's going to be. It's definitely something that I am just curious about mainly, right? This one here, regenerate one life per second for each 1% uncapped fire res is big life regen. Um, the reason this is big life regen is what uncapped means is it's the number in the parentheses, right? Uh, I don't know why the, the wording works like this, but this will massively get your... This will very much help you get Righteous Fire going. I would not be surprised whatsoever is if you see people running around in Act 2 with Righteous Fire, when you pair this 1% life regen or one flat life regen per second with something else we're going to talk about, 100% I can see people running RF in Act 2. The only problem is getting to Act 2 for the newer players if you want a smooth experience, which we'll talk about shortly. Okay, life masteries. So, new. 10% more maximum life if you have at least six life masteries allocated. This one is kind of interesting because you would have to take every single life mastery. Downside, you're taking every single life mastery. Uh, in my build, we grab five life sections, so we would not have space for the sixth one. We would have to deviate a little bit, but it's something interesting to talk about. 15% um, increased maximum life if there are no life modifiers on your equipped body armor. This is so interesting, and I will explain why. As a juggernaut, we are building on this node here called Unbreakable, which is located right over here. Unbreakable means that 8% um, of your armor applies to fire, cold, and lightning. Armor is a prefix on body armor. Percent armor, hybrid armor, uh, hybrid being like percentage with block and stun recovery, I think, and then just percent armor. So you have flat, hybrid, and percent, right? That right there are, that's three prefixes. The other thing is, there is this beautiful mod from Betrayal that is, um, if you guys have seen it, I've shown it on my website. It was from Last League, uh, which is a percentage of physical is dealt as, uh, I believe it is fire and lightning. Uh, that is also a prefix. So you could hypothetically have a percentage physical taken as fire and lightning, flat armor, percent armor, and then you could take the new life mastery for 15% increased maximum life if there are no life modifiers on your body armor. And honestly, that might actually be the way to go. So this is something really interesting. There's also Brass Dome. Brass Dome doesn't have a life roll, but Brass Dome has a potential life tag dot dot question mark. I've got a lot of mixed reviews on this because um, the strength equal no life is a life tag. I don't know. This is, I mean, it's a very easy test. I just can't test it yet, right? This is a question mark. Uh, still have our 50 maximum or 50 flat life, so no problem. Uh, and yeah, let's let's go on. So if you remember me talking about the mono, or sorry, the determination mastery being removed, we got an additional 12% mono reservation of efficiency on uh, mono nodes. So to get a mono mastery, there are two places you can go. Number one, you can go to the mono mastery located right over here at Arcane Capacitor, although we don't really use Arcane Surge, so it's kind of weird, and it's three points. The other option is if you look at my higher versions, we do actually come over to here in this beautiful section, right? I don't know why it looks like that. That's weird. I don't know what I pressed. Let me not press the compare. Uh, you can actually get Deep Thoughts. The reason why Deep Thoughts is cool is it gives you 20 intelligence, which can help up a lot of... Well, not a lot, but sometimes you have this weird issue with intelligence on a jug, so this is not bad. It does help with mana. A lot of people struggle with mana when they're on such a, a low pool. Even if everything is life tapped, sometimes there's just a little bit of inconsistency because maybe your Frost Blink won't be life tapped and your Molten Shell might not be life tapped. 
So you'll have like 25 unreserved and sometimes it just feels a little bit weird. Now you can just take mana, deep thoughts, and then the mastery. It's, it's three points to grab, but in reality, it's two points because we are not taking the determination mastery. We're taking this instead. However, we are going to be taking the one max res on the armor mastery now. So, you know, depending on how you look at it, it is kind of still three points. Okay. Um, so we went over this. We're now on mark mastery. I don't really use marks, but kind of interesting. Marked enemies cannot regenerate life. If a mob can't regen, your degen is doing full damage. One of the biggest annoyances is when you come across a mob that's like, you know, fire res, elemental res, fire and ignite resistant, uh, life regen aura, and it's on an essence that's a soul leader, and you're like, great, thanks, man. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Marked enemies cannot deal crit. Overall, it seems like they are buffing defensive layers to an extent on... They're not buffing them, they're just making them more accessible on a wide variety of classes or locations around the passive tree, and I actually really like that. That's pretty cool. That helps prevent some form of one-shot, which is nice. Uh, protection Mastery. So Protection Mastery is this mastery right here. Uh, oftentimes, we do come down and take Asylum. So this new one is... Uh, we normally would take Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you, and that's great. There is a really cool one, though, which is... and might actually be more beginner-friendly for a lot of you guys who are still learning Path of Exile and don't fully understand mechanics. Your elemental resistance cannot be lowered by curses. The reason this is cool, specifically for newer players, when you're running a map and it has elemental weakness and your fire res goes down to shit, you take a lot more damage from your RF. Or more importantly, you run into like a blasphemy mob or a blasphemer ghost or I think even there's some Arcanemesis stuff. I think that curse you. Your fire res can go from like 100% to like 72%. Not only are you taking more damage from fire, you are degening a lot because your maximum fire res is not what it's supposed to be. Um, oftentimes this can just be brute forced with your ruby flask and other factors, but it's just something nice to talk about, I think. So new recovery mastery, uh, to confirm what the recovery mastery is, Hardy is being changed to a recovery mastery. So that would be this node right here. 3% chance to recover all life when you kill an enemy. I don't really care too much about that. Life recoup effects instead uh, occur over three seconds. Normally it's over four. Recoup is when you take damage. Uh, a percentage of that damage based on your recoup amount is healed over four seconds. This would make it three. So it's recouping quicker. Every three seconds consume a nearby corpse to recover 10% life. This is what I care about, which we lost this on the life mastery. We gained it on the recovery mastery which is nearby enemies have 50% reduced life regeneration rate. Fantastic. Uh, I'm very happy that we have this because it helps a lot, excuse me, in the later stages. Life recovery from regeneration is not applied. Every four seconds recover one life, every 0.1 life recovery. It's kind of weird. I don't like inconsistency, so I'm just ignoring this one. Very high value, just very strange. This will help so many players starting out Righteous Fire. A lot of people always tell me, I followed your build guide exactly. I can't run RF. What's happening? A lot of the time, their fire res is not max or they're just missing a point or two. This 50 life regen is probably more life regen than all of your gear you have put together at level 35 when you're typically running it. This in conjunction with the fire mastery we just talked about is why I can see people running Righteous Fire in Act 2 very, very early on. So this is pretty cool. Okay, reservation masteries. Um, in 8% increased damage for each. Th this is also very good, right? We typically have this for the increased damage, but we have new ones now. 1% to maximum all res if you have reserved life and mana. If you've played my Righteous Fire Juggernaut, you know we run Arrogance Vitality. So that's another 1% maximum elemental res. That right there gets you two max elemental res. That is huge. Because what that means is you can pretty much forego an off a defensive shield like Saffles, and you can pivot into an offensive shield with potentially two maximum res. And I can show an example of this in just a little bit, maybe towards the end of the video if I remember. So um, we still have 20% uh, life res uh, res reservation efficiency. Don't really care about that. Pretty much don't care about the rest of this. Uh, recovery cluster. So there is a new recovery cluster. Surge of Vigor has been added to the northwest of the Templar starting location. 
I believe that location is located somewhere uh, right around here. I don't like it. Um, it is every four seconds regenerate 15% of life over one second. Not a big fan of that. Uh, and that pretty much covers the masteries. And now we're into the new section. So there's some new gems coming out. I didn't bring importance to them because I don't really know yet. There's like a Dex Int and an Int Support Gem. This one is Prismatic Burst. Uh, supports attacks, causing them to trigger Prismatic Burst. Don't fully know. They're supposed to um, They're supposed to be replacing Onslaught Support since Onslaught Support is being removed from the game. So leveling is something I'm going to be testing over the weekend and trying to figure out how I can provide a better leveling experience for you guys because it's completely changed and it's a Yikers. Uh, one cool thing, Faster Attacks now has a level requirement of 8, meaning it is in Act 1 instead of Act 2, which brings a lot more... Um, it'll just make a lot of earlier attack builds feel much better at that stage because you don't normally have a lot of sources of attack speed in Act 1. This is the change that makes me have to redo a lot of the leveling. The vendor recipe granting flat elemental damage to spells no longer exists. This is the one where you use the iron ring plus a red gem to make a ruby ring. Then you use a ruby ring of either white quality, magic quality, or rare quality, plus your associated scepter that needs to be transmuted so it's blue to then get X level of flat damage. That is gone. What that means is you can still level as a caster marauder, expect it to take maybe two to three times as long, for the sake of the newer players who are watching my content, I don't want to put you through that. I personally don't mind, but I want to provide you with a cleaner leveling experience, and I will do my best to provide that. I will just need to test. I originally planned to create a new campaign run video tomorrow. I don't think that's going to happen because I'm going to need time to make a more fleshed out one. So we're going to be figuring it out. We'll talk about this in a minute. Arcane Surge was also changed. It used to give a more, uh, it used to give a multiplier to spell damage. Occasionally, if I had an extra gem socket, I would put this on my Molten Shell at endgame to just trigger a spell damage multiplier. That's gone. That doesn't work anymore. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It does, however, give cast speed, which is very good in the early stages of the game, though. Um, part of the reason cast speed is so good is, depending on what we decide to level with, cast speed would make it feel better, and we'll talk about that very, very shortly. Talking about nerfs, Molten Shell has essentially been cut in half. You can no longer block 10,000 damage. It now goes up to 5k. Personally, I think mapping is going to be the exact same. I would say the big spot where this gets hit is like Maven Memory Game Tanking and uh, Awakener Meteors. Zoff's Heart Unique Amulet no longer has cover enemies in Ash when they hit you. Instead, has nearby enemies are covered in Ash. So kind of interesting. Not too bad for the early progression. However, remember we lost 20% fire multi. You probably want that on your amulet. The Devotion Notable no longer provides 5% increased effective non curse auras. It now provides 25% increased effective conk round. Inquisitor got buffed slightly. So kind of cool. Jug, again, minor nerf. Uh, we lost 5% aura effect on Devotion. Not the end of the world. We're not, you know, balancing aura effect to get max res. Not a super big deal. A little bit of a nerf. Okay, so overall thoughts, leveling will now be completely different due to the recipe changes. I'll be trying out melee leveling, which would most likely be um, either one of the steel skills from Duelist, which actually got nerfed, slash ground slam marauder into sunder, and then sunder into righteous fire, uh, or something like summon raging spirits. Uh, someone told me actually that it might actually be pretty good, especially when you can get, the thing is, is marauder gets a lot of the gems SRS would want, I believe, the support gems. So it'd be muling a Mitch, a uh, Mitch, <laughs> a witch to level four to get SRS to then give to anyway, talk about it later. Um, but yeah, with, with Arcane Surge giving cast speed, it might be okay. Overall, I think RF is easier to get set up due to the new recovery mastery. I would still go jug personally. LERF does get a nice buff since it can use one max res. Same thing with Inquisitor. Uh, jug gets 2% because you reserve your life. A lot of other ascendancies, you don't want to reserve life because survivability is a big problem. Maybe Inquisitor can get away with it because of high, you know, effective life with life plus ES. We do have to spend more points on the tree to require our reservation, but the reservation is also straight up better since it is 12% reservation. What this means is in the past, you needed the determination mastery. And if you guys remember, you needed a jewel for 3% reservation to be able to run all your auras. Now you can scrap both of those and just take the mono node 
with the reservation efficiency, and you get even more overall reservation, which potentially could be better for endgame min-maxing, so that is nice. That is a that is a plus. Uh, we definitely got hit with a damage nerf when you consider the extra points into aura reservation and the loss of the 20% fire multi. However, the defensive buffs you get from 2 max res, I think will allow you to go with an ES base shield for plus one fire gems and fire slash minion damage. A lot of people get confused on why minion damage. Remember, just open up your tree and read minion instability, or sorry, spiritual aid. If you don't understand, increased minion damage equals increased damage. Increased damage works for everything, for the most part. For a more aggressive approach, you can always dual wield or, or uh, use a staff. I'm addicted to shield charge. I don't want to give it up. <laughs> There's also the fact that we get the entire crucible, which gives you a skill tree on your main hand and your off hand, and we can prioritize damage since we have a whole bunch of survivability from the passive tree. They also already showed that there are aura reservation on there, specifically determination that was removed. I'm pretty sure it's on the crucible tree. So you could even save three points on the tree by getting the aura reservation there. Jewels also become much stronger because we lost sources of dot multi and you can get double dot multi on jewels. Just know jewels are typically very expensive. Anyway, that is pretty much about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live pretty much every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. I will be, like I said, refining the leveling process over the weekend slash on Friday. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show you guys was an offensive shield example. Now they are gonna be expensive, but it's simply an example of what you could use instead of like a Saffles frame or a defensive shield. We're looking at something that can have two maximum all res, plus one fire, tier one fire damage, life. Even if you just have max res and plus one fire and then you craft life, you're still basically at four max res because we gain two max res from the tree, right? So there, you know, before people start screaming on nerf and this isn't viable, remember that Path of Exile is a beautiful game with so much complexity. When they take away power from one spot, they typically add it in another way. It's just up to you, the player, to kind of figure out how to fit the missing puzzle pieces in. That's one of the coolest parts about Path of Exile. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Thanks for watching.